Yes, it's a blank page with notes. Open your open your notebooks to page two fourteen, please. Okay, two fourteen, blank page with notes. So, what we're gonna do today? Open it to two fourteen, please. Yep. What we're gonna do today is we're going to. We're going to solidify in your brains what we learned yesterday, and then we're going to add a little bit onto it, okay? So I want you to title your notes. Transformations. And so the way we started yesterday is we started by looking at a table and we started by seeing how transformations affect a table or how it looks in a table. Okay, so I want you to copy this one down, please. And we're going to transform this table, which as you guys talked about yesterday, that means we're going to change it somehow. Okay? And we're going to transform this table by adding five. Okay? We're going to transform this table by adding five. What I want you to do right now, don't write anything yet, but I want you to think about how is the table going to change if we want to transform it by adding five? Okay, so right now you're just thinking about that. What's this new table going to look like? How is the table going to change if we want to transform it by adding five? Okay, so now I want you to talk to your group about it. And again, don't write anything. We'll do it together. We'll write things together. But talk about how... The table's going to change. What will this table look like? What's going to be up here? What's going to be right here? What's going to be right here? Okay, so don't write anything yet because we want to make sure we, we, we got it. We'll do it together at the board. But talk about, with your group right now, what is this new table going to look like? Okay, so I want you to take two minutes and talk about it, and I'm going to call on somebody so somebody needs to have an answer ready. All right? Ready? Go ahead and talk about it. Right 
the same thing? The x's are the same? Okay, can I get somebody else to, to either agree with that or disagree with that? Edwin, do you think the x's are the same? Yeah. Okay. Edgar, why are the x's stay the same? What? What is the what is the transformation change? The range. Okay, the transformation changes the range, not the what are these called again? Domain. Not the domain. Okay, the transformation changes the range. And so then I heard some of you talk about we're going to add five. Okay, so what does this new column look like? First of all, what am I going to title it? Uh, why do I not want to title it f of x? Because this is f of x, right? And so if I change it, I need to give it a new name. Okay? All right, and so um, Alexis, can you give me what the g of x column will look like? Uh, the first one, negative 1 is 0. And the second one is 2. No, 3. And then the, that one is 6. And then 9. 13. 12. 12. No, 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Tamara, how did you get those? Because you need 5 and then plus 9 and 1. Oh, plus 5. Good. So he took each of these terms and added 5 to them to get the new one. Okay? Alright, so the second thing that we talked about yesterday was how do we write this transformation in math? Okay, so how do we write this in math? And so we said, oh, you remember? Go ahead. F of x plus g of x is uh, plus 5. No, wait, yeah, equals, yeah, equals. Yeah, equals. Oh, no. no. Okay, no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want you to, he's close. He's close. I want you to talk about this and change it with your group. Talk about this and change it a little bit to be, he knows that he was off by a little bit. So talk with your group about it and change it so that it's right. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's going to be one of these. It's going to be one of these. Okay? Um, and I heard some people said this one, some people said this one. What I want you to do right now is talk about these two. What's the difference and which one actually is it? So what do these two things mean and which one is the right answer? Okay? Why? Because how can it be adding 
Okay, so you're saying, no, you take I g of x and you subtract 5 <laughs> to get to f of x, right? Yeah. Okay, so Harvey thinks that f of x is equal to g of x minus 5. He's correct also. And that g of x equals f of x plus 5. Now the way you're saying. Oh, correct. What are you saying? <laughs> okay, hold on a second. So obviously, this is good, guys. Obviously. It's the same thing. No. Okay, listen, please. No, they're both. Obviously, there's a little bit of confusion about which order the g of x and f of x should be. Okay, and so to clarify that order, I want to, instead of like focusing Harvey on this, I want to put up another thing. Like, what if I had said there's another function out there somewhere, and it's equal to f of x minus 1? Okay? Um, what I want you to do right now is pick a partner in your group and talk to them. Read this. First of all, read this. Like, how would if I were to read this out loud to you guys, how would I read it? And then I want you to say what it means and what it means in terms of the table for P of X. Okay? So pick a partner in your group, read this, and say what it means. Right? Take a minute and a half. I find Okay, time's up. We're going to get back up here. Okay, eyes up here. Shane, what did your burger read to you? Hold on, guys, I can't hear him. It's a table. The table was, okay, B of X is going to be a table. It's going to be different. What? What? How's it going to be different? The, the domain, that's the X's. I don't think that's going to be Range is the other word you're looking for. The range? Okay, what about it? You need some help? Okay, Richard, can you help him? I need you, I need you to try. Okay, read right, this to me. Read this as a sentence. What would you say? P of x equals f of x minus 1. Okay. So now, tell me about P of x. You're going to subtract by 1. Okay. Edwin, what am I going to subtract by 1? Okay, so I'm going to take these f of x's and I'm going to subtract 1 to get the p of x common. Yeah. Okay? Alright, so everybody's clear on that. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so then the second thing that we looked at, so this is how it affects the table. Second thing we looked at yesterday was how it affects an equation. Okay? So, f of x is a function, it has an equation, okay? I want you to think to yourself right now, what's the equation I'm about to write over here, what's the equation I'm about to write for, for f of x? Brandon, it doesn't look like you're <coughs> thinking. Are you thinking? Okay, so look up here. What's the equation I'm about to write for f of x? Okay, hold on a second. 
I'm going to ask you where she got the negative 2 from. Okay. Where did she get the negative 2 from? So look it over there. Starting point. Starting point. Did she do that well? Yeah. Okay. And then where where did she get the 5 from? From where she add. She probably got the 5 from right here, the add 5, right? So she's looking between. But when we're looking for an equation, we want to look just within. So we want to look and see what am I adding here. So it's going to be 3, okay? So the rate of change on this first table is 3. The starting point is negative 2, okay? Now I'm going to write an equation up here for g of x. Adding 3 also. Okay. So, I'm, I, you know, I know the transformation exists and we, we can use that to get the equation, but let's just look at the table right now. What's my rate of change in this table? Adding 3. Adding 3. So that's still going to be my rate of change. And then what's my starting point here? Positive 3. Okay, so now, the transformation that we made here is g of x equals f of x plus 5. Okay, and this is going to show up somewhere in the equation. What I want you to do right now is talk to your group about where do I see this transformation, this plus 5, right? Maribel tried to put it as a rate of change. That wasn't where we wanted to put it, but that was a good try. She knew it had to be there somewhere. Where do I want to put the plus 5? I mean, where do I see the plus 5 happening in these equations? Okay, so talk to your group about it and see if you can figure it out. Where do I see that plus 5? <laughs>
Take about 30 more seconds and I need you to have an answer.
Okay, um, I, hold on one second. I, I heard somebody say, um, what does she mean? So let me clarify my question. On the table, we said the transformation that we're going to do is we're going to add five to the table. And we had showed up by each of these points, five got added to them. That's where it showed up. The transformation showed up in between when we added five to each of the y terms, or each of the range, terms in the range. Okay? On an equation, the plus five showed up by taking this starting point and adding five to it and getting the new starting point. So it showed up in the starting points in the equation. It showed up in the b. Okay? So then my question is, how does that same rate of change where do you see in this graph okay. the plus five? Right. Okay, that's the question that I'm asking. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I see a bunch of volunteers. Um, Debbie, you want to give it a try? No. Not this time? Will you clarify when somebody else does it? I'll get it. You say it in your own words. All right. Um, Kamari, what do you think? Where does the plus five show? Is there the y-axis? Okay. What do you mean? The rise. That's maybe right. Hold on. Yeah, the rise. No, it's not the rise. It's the rise. The rise. Okay. There's one way to put it. The rise between. Okay. Does somebody else want to say that in a different way? The rise of the rise. It's not rise of the rise. Like that's when we do rate of change. That's within a line. Factory change. Um, so, so, hold on a second. So I see this here. I see this on the y-axis. And you guys saw it on the y-axis. Does this plus 5 show up anywhere else? The y-intercept? It shows up as the y-intercept. Is there anywhere else that it shows up? It shows up in the negative parts? What do you mean? In the negative part. So I can take this point and I can go up 5 and I can get where the y-intercept is going to be on the new graph, on g of x. Is there anything else, any, any other place between that I should points? go? Between every point. Yeah, between every point. Okay, it's going to show up between every point, just like it did here in the table. How about the rise, we'll call it, because Edgar called it that, the rise from every point on f of x is going to be 5 to get to the g of x. So I can start here, and if I rise 5, that's where the g of x point is going to be. I could be here. And if I rise 5, that's where the g of x point is going to be. So from every point, the rise between f of x and g of x is going to be 5. That's where it shows up on the graph. OK? Questions? All right, I, I think you guys got this. Let's put it all together. Are we going to take a test on this? Not a test, but. Um, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do right now. We'll do the first one together and then I'll set you free on the second one. I give you a graph. I also give you its equation and I give you its table. And I give you a transformation equation. So you're going to transform it in three ways. You're going to transform it on the graph, transform it on the equation, transform it on the table. Okay? And then I'm going to ask you to actually write in words where does the transformation show up. So how, where does the transformation show up on the graph? Where does the transformation show up on the equation? Where does the transformation show up on the table? Okay. So when I hand this to you, I want you to read number seven. Just read the transformation equation to a neighbor and tell them what it means. Okay. So you're going to read this equation up here to a neighbor and tell them what it means about the two graphs. Okay. Can I look at that one? Why What are you doing? But I got to go to the back of the I can't forever. What the? Forever. Forever. All right, so right now, again, what you're doing is, shh, listen please. Look at this transformation equation. Read it to your neighbor, because I want, I want to hear you guys reading these things out loud. Read it to your neighbor. No. Read it to your neighbor and tell them what it means. Okay? 
Read it to your neighbor and tell them what it means. Go. Everybody should be reading it to your neighbor.
you take three away from where, like, what is your explanation of how you got the new table? So it's what words are you putting on it? And your words might be different than your neighbors. You might call them different things, but I need everybody to do that. Okay? You're doing over on the table. Where does it show up on the table? Where does the transformation show up? So I just want to see the words that you put on. What you're thinking in your head when you're saying, I need to change something. What is it that you need to change in the table? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's your answer? The starting point. You changed the starting point. Okay. What? The ready to change doesn't change. Oh, it's the starting point. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me get uh, everybody's attention, please. My a bunch of really good answers. Um, my favorite answer was, somebody said, every point in the range, I'm going to subtract three from. Okay? Every point in the range, I'm going to subtract three from. And that's just the words that they put on them. Every point in this range, I'm going to subtract three. Okay? All right. Let's do the equation. Go ahead and write the new equation, g of x. Take a minute. Again, we should be able to do this by ourselves.
Come on, guys. We're almost done. You guys are doing really well. Bear with me. Listen to my question. Look at me. Listen to my question. How do I do the transformation on the graph? Graph the points. Do I add three to each of points? No. So I'm going to take each point and I'm going to move it down three. Okay? So take this original graph and take each point and move it down three and get your new graph. Okay, take each point and move it down three. What does that mean? <laughs> And write in words, please. How does it show up on a graph? Where does the transformation show up? Just let me show up on the equation. The starting point. Can we just put an arrow? No, write it. Write it again okay. in words. Don't be lazy. All right. Once you have that written, I want you to go down, and this should be quick at this point. The transformation equation for number eight: f of x equals g of x plus two. I want you to go change the table, change the equation, change the line. Okay? And then we'll be done. Alright, so you guys are doing number eight. You don't have to write the words on number eight. Just do the changes. Last one. Okay, everybody's doing number eight right now. Transform the graph, transform the equation, transform the table. In any order you want. You don't have to write the words at the bottom. Is it right that you Yep. Do the table, do the graph, do the...